Hello, and thank you for joining us here at the First Alert Desk. An exciting day. Uh, we are almost to Wednesday, so halfway through the work week. But we uh, just heard recently that the national championship game is returning to Atlanta, and sports is in a lot of people's minds, and it is also back to school season, so a lot of athletes hitting the field. We are actually taking a moment today to talk with sports and performance psychology, Dr. Haley Perlis. Dr. Perlis, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, right off away, I just wanted to give a little background on you. You are not only a, uh, a doctor of sports and performance psychology, but you are an elite alpine ski racer yourself, so you have that background as an athlete. Can you talk a little bit about what got you started in sports psychology? Actually, yes. Um, it was when I was a teen athlete. When I was 12 years old, I was competing in the junior, junior, junior world championships and long story short my coach pulled out a hundred dollar bill and put it in front of my face and told me that he bet on me to win and so in that moment you know as we all can we either think oh no what if he's wrong what if i make a mistake or oh yeah if he believes in me why shouldn't i believe in myself and that's i ended up <laughs> sorry i ended up going down that race course thinking well if he's putting pressure on me it must mean that i'm doing something right which is one of the tips that we can talk about today, dealing with anxiety. And uh, I did go down, I did win that race, that was great. And my coach told me that it's amazing what your performance can do when you get your head straight. And then he brought a sports psychologist to speak to my team. And at 12 years old, I decided that this is what I wanted to do. I think that's so incredible and rare to find your passion at such a young age, but clearly uh, that was your calling and you continue with it today. And to that point, you know, we talk a lot about the importance of having support. Uh, football players, they usually have cheerleaders there to keep that energy going. You have family members come out to really help keep their players' spirits up. So can you talk a little bit about the importance of having that support system or offering that support system, especially to a teen athlete? Yeah, it's really key. I believe that we all can be motivated uh, with the right environment and having an, a support system, but a right support system. So if a support system is only focusing on the scoreboard and the results, that's going to increase our anxiety, right? But if our support system focuses on other important things, then that allows us to, to maintain our motivation, maintain our confidence, maintain our focus on what we can control. So support is good, but it has to be the right support. Absolutely. And from the athlete's perspective, you know, there's three parts when you are talking about a competition or a sport. Uh, it's the mental aspect before the game, you know, staying focused during, and a lot of the aftercare that you ought to do for yourself. So I want to break all of those down with you. Uh, my first question, of course, preparing yourself mentally before a competition. At that young of an age, a lot of those, a lot of teen athletes are starting out for the first time um, in a sport and experiencing that level of intensity and competition. What is a good way for them to stay focused and keep their pregame anxiety down? Yeah, that's a great question. At the end of the day, we all know that one team is going to win or one athlete is going to win. So winning is definitely part of sport. And I like winning. I actually like competition. But if we make the results, if we make winning the only thing that we're focused on before the competition, we're actually increasing our anxiety, increasing our fear, our worry, our frustration, and that's not going to help us. So what we really want to do is focus on our strengths. In training, we want to work on our weaker links and highlight our highlight our strengths. And I believe in competition. We really want to focus on what we do best. Walk onto that field or the court or the pool, whatever your sport is, but walk into that competition environment owning your strengths. And that's something that I believe we need to focus on as we get ready, the day before, the night before. And you talk a lot about focusing on small goals and big goals. Of course, the big goal oftentimes is winning that game and winning the competition and winning the ultimate championship. But what are some smaller goals that teen athletes can set for themselves uh, day to day leading up to those big events or those big moments for them? Sure, absolutely. And in my humble opinion, it is technique or tactics real specific things that we can physically do so that we can check it off if we know that we did it or not. Doing your best to me is not a good enough small goal, not a good enough process goal, giving your best effort because it's kind of vague if we did and we don't really know if we can do more. But knowing that we're going to, you know, uh, make these many connections or make these many passes or every time you get the ball, you're going to process this or do this technique, tactics, 
strategy, in my opinion, is where we want to be because that's what we can control. That's what we can improve on. It's skill set. And I want to talk a little bit about that uh, life balance that athletes often have to face, especially young athletes. You know, you have school, you have your uh, training and practice, you have your games, and, and really uh, uh, navigating your own identity at that young age. What is uh, good advice for them to stay focused and stay uh, in the game? Because that's also, uh, often a big deal for them, but also not let other avenues of their life falter. Another another great question. I'm I'm uh, I'm loving these. It's 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 so. I uh, thank you. Uh, one thing that we have to focus on in adults and it's definitely in teens, burnout is on the rise. Right, every which way we go. It's not just for adults. It's actually for teens too, because we're getting so focused and so determined, and we're not recovering. Recovery is the only way to prevent burnout. But let me tell you that recovery is not just in stillness. Recovery is in variety, taking yourself out of one task and putting yourself into another that creates some variety. So when we talk about work, work life or school life or sport life balance, we have to understand that when you do step away from your sport to engage in schoolwork or to engage in social or to engage in another sport, it actually might be doing yourself a really big service. You're recovering from that sport, so you're renewing energy, but you're also allowing yourself to stay motivated and excited and confident about life by having variety in it. And we're getting closer to that beginning of the competition timeline that we're moving through. So let's talk about that the night before. You know, as an athlete, I myself was an athlete. I was a former uh, swimmer in my high school. And I remember feeling those jitters the night before a competition. I couldn't really go to sleep, but I knew I needed all of that energy. And you're too excited to eat. What is a good way to calm your mind? Here's the thing. If you're feeling nervous, if you're if you're got those butterflies in your stomach, it means a couple of things. So remember this. It means that A, you care. B, you think you could do something, because if we don't think we can actually perform, why get upset? Well, <laughs> we don't. So we actually, it actually is a sign of confidence and passion. We're not really excited or nervous about things we're not passionate for. So the butterflies in your stomach, the not being able to eat, the not being able to sleep, if we change the story, if we get the story right, it means we care. It means we're excited. It means we believe we can do something. Then what we can do is take those butterflies swarming all around our stomachs, for example, and use them to our advantage. Tell those butterflies to go, for example, in an inverted V. A lot of athletes do that. Put them in an inverted V in our mind, so visualization, and birds fly in an inverted V for efficiency to be quick. So if we get our butterflies there too, now that energy is going to help us. So that's one great way. One more thing before, before I let you go to the next question. If we can't sleep the night before, if we can't eat the night before, we don't want to get more frustrated because that's just going to keep us awake more at night. It's going to help us eat, uh, you know, not be able to eat even more. So sometimes we just have to accept the fact that we're not going to be sleeping tonight. Sometimes we have to accept the fact that we are anxious. And then miraculously, sometimes we do go back to sleep. We do feel less anxious just because we let it be. And now moving to the moment where you were in the game, uh, let's talk a little bit about distraction. I really want to uh, get your insights on all of the mental uh, things that athletes can face, especially young athletes. Let's say you're in the game, you know you need to focus, you, you felt ready a moment ago, but now you're finding yourself distracted. What is a good way to regain your focus and hone uh, the moment you're in? With every athlete that I consult with, we always come up with three words that describe them when they're at their best. So it might be that they are a good kicker, it might be that they are a good passer, it might be that they are a good cheerleader, it might be that they can read. And so when they're feeling a little bit lost, when they feel distracted, they don't have to think far and wide. They don't have to search far and wide for what to do. They bring back one or more, but specifically one of those top three words. And then that is what they follow. That is, I'm now going to be the cheerleader. I'm now going to focus on my kicking. I'm now going to focus on my passing. I'm now going to focus on my breathing. I'm now going to focus on my fluidity. Whatever it might be, have three words that best describe you at your best. And then when you feel yourself getting pulled by distraction, focus on one of those three best words that you can bring to that present moment. 
And this might be a, a question for both the teen watching and also the coach or caregiver or parent. Uh, we often have a lot of hope for our teen athletes to continue in the sport. Maybe it's a sport that we did at one point and we want them to have that same energy and excitement. But what happens when that athlete starts to feel uh, overwhelmed or says they can't continue? What should that conversation be from that eager coach or eager parent? That's a great, great question because these are the years, teenage years, which are the, the real years, right? This is where we decide whether they're going to pursue our sport or they're going to choose a different sport or leave the sport. So this is, this is key. I really think it's important that as we're developing to always acknowledge what we're doing right, what we're doing well, our achievements, even if it doesn't show on the scoreboard, but then also what we can do better what we can do more of, what we can do to improve. So those two questions, what am I doing right? And what can I do more of or better of? What can I improve upon? Those maintain those two questions maintain confidence, but they also maintain a growth mindset where we can continue to improve. And no matter the scoreboard, and that is sometimes sad or that is sometimes great, in, it doesn't matter if we win or lose, we can always bring our conversation back to these two things because then it's about us and taking ownership for our own development. And then we see some athletes will persevere, some athletes will choose different sports, different life adventures. And we also talk a lot about uh, sportsmanship in the game and that's an important part of being an athlete. Uh, and when those emotions as you're playing your game or maybe shortly after you possibly lost a competition, as those emotions are running high, how can teens, young athletes, keep in mind the meaning of and importance of sportsmanship? It's key, isn't it, right? So we need to treat, it's, fun, it's funny because sometimes we're our own worst critics, but sometimes we're not the best support for others. I actually keep it the same thing. I really like athletes to tell other athletes what they did right. And if there's certain times, you know, what we can all do better. So we're constantly giving ourselves feedback. It's not all just cheerleading. Like you said at the beginning, football players have cheerleaders. It's not all just rah, rah, you can do it. I actually like real meaty feedback. This is what you did well. And this is what we can all do to improve. This is what we can do better. I think those conversations allow us all to believe in each other. An athlete, a coach, sorry, a coach doesn't tell an athlete to improve unless that coach believes the athlete can improve. So, and, and if we're constantly focusing on what we're doing well and what we can do to improve, we, we are given the belief that we can do better. And that's that growth mindset that is key for teen athletes. And that's also where the importance of that support system comes in as well. Uh, I wanted to really pick your brain about something that's not often talk, talked about, and that's mental aftercare. You know, whether you lost a, a competition or you won a competition, but it's the middle of the season, you got to show up for practice tomorrow and do it all over again. How do you focus your mental health or your mentality after coming down from that game? Yeah, we are emotional creatures and emotion trumps logic most of the time if we're not careful. So what we need to do after every competition, after every practice, we need to kind of close it. Right. And one way to do that is with a post performance routine. So we all talk about pre performance routines. We even did so here. Uh, we need to incorporate now a post performance routine, whether it's to vent what just happened, shake it off, whether it's to again do what I said before, acknowledge what you're, where you did, what you did right and where you can improve, but some type of post performance routine, music affirmations, eating, group exercise, team exercise to book a, to put a bookend on it. So that when you start the next day, next competition, it's fresh. Because the only thing we bring from one day to the next is really our thoughts and our emotions. So we need a post-performance routine to close it. And then we need a pre-performance routine to start the next day. Well, thank you so much again. And I, this is a rare moment. Not a lot of parents, coaches, and young athletes get a, a moment where they can ask all these questions of the sports psychologist. So I want to make sure I didn't leave anything out. Uh, was there a, an overall message that you want that young athlete to take away from addressing the mental side of the game? One thing, and we did address it a little bit, but I'm going to drive this point home. Winning is an obvious 
the scoreboard, the results is an obvious motivation. It's there. It's going to be there. And I like it, but we don't need to harp on it. We don't need to focus on it because it's already being focused on. So as coaches and parents and teammates and you yourself as an athlete, if we can really focus on the technique, on the strategies, on the tactics, on the day-to-day, the moment-to-moment, the results will take care of itself. That is there. It's not going anywhere. So if we can bring our focus back to what it is that we can control, everything else will fall into place. Well, Dr. Perlis, thank you so much for your time, and I wish you a good rest of your Tuesday. And, of course, we're going to have this full interview along with more useful tips and a link to more resources you can check out on our website, cbs46.com.